Hello, this is episode number 30 of the Apology 2 podcast. So hello, welcome, and very glad you're here and listening. Uh, I'm in a particularly echoey room today. So I'm, my microphone is buried in a pile of blankets and towels and underwear to try and eliminate some of that echo. And there is a stiff breeze outside, quite the gale blowing, uh, which is causing quite a lot of noise as well. So I'm sorry if you can hear any of that, but I am doing my best. And, you know, that's that's all you can do, isn't it? Yeah, look, so episode 30. I'm trying to do something reasonably special every 10 episodes, I guess. And, I mean, I can't do that forever because you have a, you know, a special every 10 episodes. If you're not doing a thousand episodes, that's a hundred specials, which is just fucking mad. Uh, but look, it isn't, I say it's special. It's just a really massive fucking balls out idea for this week. It's about as controversial as this podcast has been. And it's about as controversial as it probably will ever be. Uh, It's going to be about religion. I think it's the third religious based podcast. That's quite a lot. 10% of all the podcasts so far have been about religion. It's getting a bit obsessive, but you know, it's just like, just have some nice, good ideas about it. So you, Fucking listen to them. Yeah, so and it's also about uh, a bit of there's a bit of social justice stuff interwoven in there as well, uh, which, you know, so there's plenty of ways in which I can offend people this week. So that's going to be good. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. And look, the idea, the chances are, if you're listening to this, you've probably seen the title already, so you know what the idea is. So the idea is about... Uh, whether or not Jesus was transgender. Right? Makes sense. <laughs> uh, you might be thinking you're mad, but what the whole point of this podcast or, or this particular episode of the podcast is is for is to make you challenge your interpretations of things. The chances are you think that Jesus is a man or your understanding of Jesus, you know, the picture you have in your head of him, the uh, things you think he said, uh, who you think he was, that's all been given to you probably by someone telling you, you know, some like fucking nonce Catholic priest telling you when you were a kid or your parents telling you or something that you've read in a book. And bearing in mind there was very little uh, footage of Jesus, (laughs) you know, we don't really know anything for sure about him. Uh, So that's the point that we're... That's the overarching point that you should challenge your ideas about stuff that, you know, you you are told by other people uh, without being backed up by any actual hard evidence. And that's it, really. But I'm going to try and construct some semi-coherent and maybe even amusing ideas about why Jesus was transgender throughout you know, the stories from the Bible, which which I know. I haven't actually done a huge amount of Bible reading in preparation for this, so there might be some inaccuracies. As I've said before on this podcast, if you're concerned about the inaccuracies, like, fuck off. Um, it's not a problem. And, you know, if you listen to this podcast for the last 30 episodes, you'll know that, you know, a lot of this is shooting from the hip, so if I can get over it. But look, without any further ado... We will dive into it. Um, so, yeah, is it possible that Jesus was transgender? Yeah, of course it's possible. Uh, as I said, like there's most evidence about Jesus is anecdotal. Uh, you know, we don't know much about him in terms. You know, the extent that there's no videos. The, the the gospels they're not historical documents. You know that they they, or if they are historical documents, they certainly have a, a strong element of bias to them. Because Jesus wasn't like an elected leader or a king, that there wasn't anybody keeping records of him, really. So a lot of it is very anecdotal. So you don't know much about him. Uh, and a lot of stuff has just been filled in. People have filled in the gaps since he died. That's that's mostly about Jesus. And there's pretty much three perspectives about Jesus uh, in Western society three different ideas about him and those are that jesus didn't exist at all and if you think that jesus didn't exist at all uh, then you are stupid 
or just pointlessly contrarian. Jesus definitely existed. Like there's, there's as much evidence for Jesus, more, more evidence for Jesus existing than there is like Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great or, you know, Alfred the Great or William the Conqueror. There's as much evidence for them, uh, you know, as there is for Jesus. So if you believe in other historical figures, then you should believe in Jesus. He did exist. Uh, you know, no debate about that one. Then there's the second point of view, which is that uh, Jesus did exist, but maybe wasn't who he said he was or who other people said he was. He wasn't king of the Jews, son of God, the chosen one, all that jazz. He was just a man who had a large following and had a, an impact on on society. Yeah, I, and I think that's probably the most likely one. That'd be my point of view as well. And then you have the third set of people who believe that Jesus was literally the son of God and he is our saviour and he's going to he died for, for our sins so that we would be forgiven. Uh, and th those are the pretty much three perspectives on Jesus. So we're not going to talk about the people who don't believe in Jesus at all. You know, if you think that, then just put yourself into the bin for now because uh, your opinion doesn't matter here. We're going to talk about the other two. And if there's any actual evidence that Jesus was transgender. Oh, lovely gob of tea. Yum. Uh, okay, so a story of the Bible is I think Mary has a dream. Mary, Jesus' mum, she has a, a dream. And in that dream, God comes to her and he's like, yeah, mate, going to get you pregnant with my son. She's like, fuck, but I'm a virgin. How can I be pregnant? He's like, well, I'm God. I'm magic. I can fucking do whatever I want. So I'm going to put a baby in you. And she's like, yeah, cool. Let's do it. I'm going to be mother of the son of God. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool claim to fame. Yeah, you know, and that claim to, claim to fame has lasted. You know, people talking about it thousands of years later. Fair enough, Mary. Good decision. Uh, the problem with Mary is that she's female. And that's not... <laughs> God, that's, that's going to be a sound bite that's going to get fucking clipped and played back to me in 20 years' time at a job interview, isn't it? No. The problem with Mary giving birth to a male is that she is female. So... She has two X chromosomes and uh, there was no sperm involved. So there was no Y chromosome involved, which means that as far as I'm aware, you know, I'm not exactly biologist of the year, but if you only have X chromosomes, you can't give birth to a boy. It can't be done. Like genetically, that's not possible. Right? So... There's evidence. A. So you've got a situation where she's given birth to a girl and that girl then is Jesus and the son of God. Uh, so that would mean that at some point there had to be some sort of gender transition happening. Yeah. <laughs> so I can case closed. Yeah, Jesus was transgender. Yeah. No, of course, you know, big magic God in the sky would obviously know about chromosomes, wouldn't they? Because he knows everything. You know, God, he's famous for knowing everything. Famously, all-knowing God. So he'd have gone, yeah, I know about the chromosomes. That's a bit of a fucking problem, isn't it? You know, I don't really want to have a girl because uh, no one's going to respect her, you know, in, in that era. So so I would, I'm willing to accept that God did some sort of big wizard, divine intervention, magic shit and changed the chromosomes of the baby in, and added a Y chromosome. But even if he did, even if he did do that, I say he did, we don't even know God's a man, do we? You know, the whole father thing just means like figure of authority. Think about that. God could be a woman. You know, you don't see God's penis, do you? In the Bible, it doesn't happen. Anyway, let's move swiftly on. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. He might, if he's changed the the the, the chromosomes of, of the baby, then really that is like the purest and most ultimate form of gender transition, isn't it? He has transitioned the baby Jesus in the womb from being a female to a male. Meaning that Jesus was transgender, even if it was before his birth. <laughs> Got it. So that's the scientific part of it, Dan. Uh, look, now we'll move on to the circumstantial element of it. Um, and look, if Jesus was born a girl, 
uh, a female genetically, then basically that's not not a good look for someone who's going to change the face of the earth uh, because people at that point were quite sexist, weren't they? You know, if you read some stuff in the Bible, they weren't particularly nice to women. Uh, so it would have been a bad PR move for God's child to be a girl. So if it was born a girl, then Jesus would have had to transition into being, being a male. So from day one, there's a strong chance that Mary and Joseph had to raise that girl as a boy. And obviously that child then had to accept it and, and, and be a be a boy for for the entirety of their life. So that that's for basically just for solely PR reasons, Jesus may have been transgender. Uh, and that also works as like a security move. So in in Matthew, the book Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, he writes that as soon as uh, Herod, who was the king, I think, at the time, as soon as he learned that there was a baby boy born who was the son of God, he's like, right, okay, well, solution to this, to stop there being a new king instead of me, is to kill all of the baby boys in the country. So that's what he did. He, he, according to Matthew, he kills every child, every kid under the age of two, every boy under the age of two, not girls, just kids and girls, kills all the boys under the age of two. All right. And the Bible's official story is that uh, Jesus, well, Joseph, his dad, stepdad, Joseph's his stepdad, isn't he, uh, took him to Egypt while all this was going on. And as such, uh, Herod was unable to kill Jesus, and Jesus survived the, the massacre. Right, I'm going to contend that and say that that is fucking not possible. You could, there's no way. So if Jesus was born in Bethlehem and lived in Nazareth, which is like the northern end of Palestine. Uh, yeah, Egypt is fucking miles away. In fact, I've, I've looked it up on Google Maps. It's a six day walk if you're an adult and walking all day. You know, if you've got a baby and a donkey and food and supplies and stuff, it's probably going to take you a fortnight couple of weeks uh, to, to get from, from Bethlehem to uh, from Bethlehem to Cairo. Cairo is what I, what I put. So basically, it would have taken them two weeks. Uh, not possible, bearing in mind the resources available to them. I know fucking, you know, they have God watching over them. Uh, and also, uh, they would have been found. You know, if they seem to be traveling with a baby, then I mean, like, what the fuck is that screaming baby? Is it a boy? Oh, yes, it is. Let's kill it. So what I would say is that that didn't happen, and that's just a bit of a cover story. And what actually happened is that that baby was inspected by Herod's minions, saw the baby had a had a fanny, and was like, "Oh, grand, it's a girl," because you know they were obviously quite you know unaware of tr trans issues back then, so they wouldn't even know this was a trans baby, right? <laughs> so they they spared the baby, and as a result. Jesus was allowed to, to move on and, and grow up as a boy. So that's how he survived. That's my theory, that the trans-exclusionary nature and the, the sexist nature of the society back then enabled Jesus to survive the massacre of the innocents, according to Matthew. Fucking nailed on that. That's a fat core. Look at this. This is intelligent, heavyweight stuff, isn't it? Um, Look, pr pretty much after Jesus is born, you, you don't really hear much about him in the Bible for like 30 years. There's very little about him. But th there's pretty much only one thing that happens to Jesus after he's he, he's born and, you know, between birth and the age of 50, uh, 30. And that's that you hear about his circumcision. And I reckon, because it's like... I guess it's traditionally supposed to be like a symbolic thing that Jesus was complying with the law of the Jews. So he, he is a Jew uh, and that he is human as well. That was, that was, I think, the purpose of going into detail about his circumcision. But I would contend that, again, it's a PR move. It's a distraction technique to say, oh, look at Jesus, he's a boy, because we've got a story about his, his circumcision. So they've concocted this whole story about him being circumcised to throw us off the, the, the trail and to make us think 
that he was a genetic male, but actually he was a genetic female who transitioned into being a male. And during those 30 years, right, you don't hear a lot about Jesus. Bearing in mind he's a son of God with magical powers, it is quite that's quite interesting. Like, why was you know why wasn't he doing miracles and turning water into wine during that time? I would contend that you know obviously being born as the son of God, but being born a female, having transitioned into a male, in order to 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 to, to fulfil that role, it, it's quite a big deal, isn't it? <laughs> you know, so obviously, I reckon that spent thirty years to sort of come to terms with who he was, i.e. A, a, a trans male who was also happens to be the son of the most powerful being in the universe, right? Uh, so I reckon it takes him 30 years. And then once he's sort of, he gets to 30 and he's like, right, I really understand who I am. I understand, you know, the whole thing about what my gender and my sex and my, and my genetics and who my father is and who my father isn't and the fact that my mum's a virgin. He understands all of that and that's when he appears. And obviously that takes quite a long time. If he was just a normal boy at that time, then it, it, he might have come forth sort of sooner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was a carpenter. Uh, like Joseph. Joseph and Jesus, they were carpenters together while they were growing up. And... Uh, whilst I was writing this, I thought that maybe there was like a cheap joke about psychoanalysis that Jesus was working with the wood he never had. But I'm not going to make that joke because, you know, that's quite transphobic. So, uh, look, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to sort of a, bit more, a few other facts about Jesus. Jesus basically never had a girlfriend. It was never reported to have a girlfriend. There's a whole thing about Mary Magdalene. But honestly, I think that's just people posthumously trying to sex Jesus up a little bit. He never had a girlfriend. And I think that that's potentially not because he's the son of God and he uh, practices his celibacy because of his faith. I think it's more to do with the fact that, bearing in mind he was a genetic female, uh, it's it would have been too risky to have a relationship at that time. So he's a genetic female, you know, with, with, with a vagina who's transitioned to be a male who's going to be the son of God who's going to die for our sins. It's quite risky to, to have a relationship with someone because, you know, they might then out you before you're ready to the world. And then you would probably in that time, imagine in that time you would have been killed for that. And it would have scuppered God's whole plan. So that's basically why Jesus never has a girlfriend. So yeah, look, we get to when Jesus is 30 and then he becomes a preacher and he starts, you know, becoming the Jesus that you know from all the stories. And during his teachings, he says something about uh, why people are eunuchs. And the, the the translation of eunuch in this scenario isn't someone who's been castrated. It's someone who uh, doesn't practice sex or who, who basically has no use for their genitalia. Uh, and he says that some people are eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. So basically, some people abstain from sex because they're saving themselves for God, basically. That's that's the, mod, the, the modern sort of interpretation of that. My interpretation of that is he was saying that he was a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven, i.e. that he didn't use his genitalia any stage during his life uh, for reproductive purposes because he was so committed to his whole Son of God thing, because he was so committed to his trans identity. That is why he didn't use his genitals. <laughs> uh, you know, and that's what eunuchs of the kingdom of heaven mean in his teachings. And so uh, part of Jesus' teachings, the whole thing is about basically ditching the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments existed before, you know, there's a, there's a very serious list of them, and it's all quite judgmental stuff. You know, you've got things like an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth all that sort of jazz, Jesus does away with all that. Mostly what he says is just like fucking love everybody else. Everybody loves everybody. Everybody love everybody. It's a good quote from Semi-Pro. But if everyone loves everyone, then everything will be great. <laughs> That's basically what Jesus said. Very hippie sort of vibe to that. And that that was his, his, his preaching. And in such a sort of like brutal time where people were so distrustful of each other and so violent towards people who were different to them, 
that's a very radical concept. And do you think potentially that that's drawn from his experiences as someone who has lived as both a genetic female and a gendered male? So he understands several different perspectives on what it's like to be alive. And he knows what it's like not to have a father or a father as a physical being. You know, he knows what it's like to be sort of working class. He, he's a He knows what it's like to be a genetic female. He knows what it's like to live as a male. That's why Jesus has such a, a, a good sort of uh, perspective on all these things. And that's how he was able to preach this sort of equal uh, ideology before anybody else was able to. And the whole love one another thing basically gets so misinterpreted. Uh, you know, people like it's like that's all he said really. He didn't say anything about gays. He said a, he said something I think about marriage that it's between a man and a woman, but he didn't say anything about gays at all. Really, doesn't say, doesn't mention homosexuality at all. Doesn't say anything about. Uh, you know, hoarding wealth. So if you fucking look at the Catholic Church, they hoard a huge amount of wealth. In fact, he actually preaches against that, hoarding wealth. And it, so th there's all these people out there who take money and put others down and re refuse people medical treatment and all this sort of jazz in the name of what Jesus said. And actually he said, fuck all about it. All he said is love everybody else. And it's massively fucked up, actually, that people use Jesus to, to do the opposite of that. That's my little soapbox, my little political message. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Uh, Jesus had female disciples and friends and spoke of equality. Uh, and th this is basically a, a subtext to increase female rights. So if Jesus, in his position of power, is seen with female disciples and he's seen with... Yeah, you know, talking to women like Martha and Mary and Mary Magdalene, and he's got he's got female apostles. Then, basically, other people will see that and they'll go, "Oh, it's okay for women, you know, to be friends with women and to have them in your group and to to to, to build them up, right?" So, and maybe that's to do with Jesus's genetics, the fact that he had two X chromosomes to begin with, because he understand he therefore understands women better because of his genetics, right? Fucking class idea, that. <laughs> okay, uh, and another thing Jesus did, so I don't really know the story, but I have heard it before, that he's doing like a, a sermon or he's preaching and someone says to him like, oh, your mum and brother are outside. No, he had a brother. Maybe his mum and dad, I don't know. I say mother and brother, we'll go for it. Your mother and brother are outside. And he basically says, like, uh, everybody who follows the teachings of God or follows the will of God is my mother and brother. I ha don't have a mother or brother. I have, you know, a whole world full of them. So was that Jesus saying, you know, we're all the same? Or was that Jesus rejecting traditional gender roles? of mother and brother. He was saying, everybody's my mother and everybody's my brother. You know, you don't have to have these roles for genders because it it, it doesn't matter. So that was him expressing himself as a, a trans male to say that, you know, you shouldn't be pinning these labels on people. Right? <laughs> yeah, fucking, you know, I'm going to get the Bible changed. Definitely. Whole new light. Going to get Matthew, Mark, Luke and John changed to, I don't know. Matilda Marquette. Uh, what's what's the girl version of Luke? I don't know. And Jonah. That's what I'm going to get changed to. Uh, no, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus then gets gets crucified at the end. That's that's what happens to him. He 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 gets executed by the state, uh, which is pretty extreme. And uh, he's basically put up on the. On the, on, on the cross and stabbed and nailed on there and left to die. It's pretty fucking gruesome, isn't it? <laughs> pretty horrible way to die. 
that, you know, as Life of Brian says, you know, it just gets you out in the open air. Uh, and he's always depicted as wearing like a cloth around his waist during this point, which is fucking convenient, isn't it? You'd think that they'd take your clothes. And maybe he insisted on having the cloth because he didn't want people to see his vagina. So the crucifixion could have been him being sort of outed to the world. You never know. And, and what people will say to me about the crucifixion is that it, it's quite clear that he has a beard and, and long hair, you know, but and, and that he doesn't have any tits. That he's quite flat chested. You know, he's pretty much, you know, pretty ripped, isn't he, Jesus? You know, he's been, he's been pump, pumping some iron in the gym. Um, and yeah, like, I accept that, that he is flat chested and he does have a beard. Um, and that, that might put a, uh, put a hole in my argument. Except that, you know, Jesus was a fucking crazy, awesome wizard guy. He could turn water into wine and walk on water and cure people of leprosy. So you're fucking telling me that a guy who can cure someone of a skin disease can't grow himself a bit of extra facial hair? Fuck off. Of course he could. You know, if you believe in ma magical Jesus, man, right, you can do all this other stuff, you can fucking believe that he can get rid of his tits and grow a beard. So piss off. <laughs> uh, look, yeah, so I had this horrible thought whilst I was writing this that... Uh, if I was crucified and I woke up, you know, three days later and I was I was alive and I rose from the dead like Jesus did, that the first thing I'd do is look at the holes in my hand, you know, where they put the nails through. I don't know if they put them through his wrist or his hand, but they put holes in him. And I'd think, I wonder if I can fuck that hole. <laughs> and the fact that there's no mention of Jesus trying to fuck the hole in his hands would indicate that he didn't have a penis, right? God, that's massively fucked up, isn't it? We'll fucking move on for that. So like, obviously Jesus was um, crucified and uh, he was crucified apparently. Well, no one actually really knows why he was crucified. No one knows the exact charge that they brought against him, but the, uh, the belief is that it was for sedition, uh, which is basically like anti-establishment um, rhetoric. Right, but there's not much proof of that. You know, all, all that happened is that all we know is that Judas betrayed him for money. But maybe it's because he was he was transgender, and that sort of like Judas was aware, and like the disciples and gospel writers were were in on the whole. You know, Jesus is trans thing. His close confidants knew that he was transgender, and as a result. Uh, one of them betrayed him, and then he was killed for being trans. He was like the first trans martyr. And then being sort of in on it is another reason why it's sort of like when they wrote the Gospels afterwards, that they, they were able to report him uh, as a male, even though he sort of, he wasn't, he wasn't genetically, because they were in on the whole thing, and Jesus and God had told them, like, fucking don't report him as trans, because this whole society is very trans exclusionary and you know we don't want our new religion to be inhibited by inhibited is that the right word impugned held back we don't we don't want the new religion to be held back by basically transphobes so if you could just airbrush that bit out you know, that would be great and i think that is is what happened you know obviously judas was a bit of a prick but judas killed himself anyway because he you know, probably has some very internalized issues about trans people. And so he's like, okay, well, I'll have Jesus killed, but then he feels bad about it. Maybe Judas was trans himself, like, or, or he wanted to be trans. And it, he sort of internalized that anger and, and ended up killing himself and Jesus. And ultimately, the whole thing about this is, is that if Jesus, you know, was trans, he had to, uh, you know, sort of pretend that he wasn't. Because back then, no one was going to listen to a to a trans person. They were going to be killed immediately, weren't they? And potentially he was killed immediately as soon as Pontius Pilate found out from Judas. That is why he was crucified, possibly. You know, who knows? And look, that's, that's pretty much all I've got, all the evidence I've got on uh, Jesus being trans. But the thing you've got to take away is that 
what I've just said is fucking palmy, right? It's nuts, but it's only as fucking true as any other interpretation of the Bible. It's only as true as the people who say that you know, gay people should be put to death, you know, or Amish people. They're, they're fucking nuts, aren't they? You know, it, it's only as true as their interpretations. You know, fucking Catholicism, there's so much stuff that they do in the Catholic Church, the organized Catholic Church. I'm not talking about actual Catholics, but the, the organized Catholic Church, which completely misses the point of what Jesus was getting at. You know, they, they take such a hard line on so many social issues that Jesus would have been totally cool. If Jesus was around today, he'd be a social justice warrior, wouldn't he? So, you know, that's that's the, that's the point. You know, maybe Jesus was born a genetic male. You know, that's probably quite likely. But that the point is, is that, you know, you have to make your own ideas about religion and, and the Bible and, and what it said. You can't just slot into a category of cunts. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the overarching message. Uh, look, that's pretty much the end of the podcast this week. Uh, thanks for listening. It's been pretty cool quite enjoyed doing this episode uh, i'll be back next week and then the week after and you know, I'll, i'm sure we'll have some christmas special episodes uh you know do give the podcast a thumbs up or a like or a five stars or a subscribe or all of the above and uh, do tell your friends plenty of podcast content available on social media so do do get in touch there if you're really angry about the content of this podcast i'd love to hear from you because that'll be really uh interesting to hear how wound up people have got from this and that's all i've got so thank you very much and i'll see you later bye